Emma. Self, for anyone who is out of the loop, Kent Hovind was found guilty of domestic assault against his ex-wife, Cindy. It, we can, I'll be glad to go there, okay? How many of you knew Cindy when this was happening? Did I do anything wrong? She went berserk. Listen to the audio. She's got it on her own channel. She went berserk. She was attacking me. I stayed calm the whole time. I didn't body slam her. One court said, yes, you did. It was a judge with literally no ears who had ear headphones in. He couldn't hear the audio. So he literally had no ears, and yet he had headphones in. He couldn't hear. I love that Kent's decided that the judge couldn't hear the audio. Like any judge is so blasé about their job that if they can't hear the audio, they just make a, they just decide anyway. So it's mm -hmm. like I said, he was found guilty. And Kent's like, well, but my paid employees and friends, did I do anything wrong? Okay, one mm -hmm. judge said that, but he was yeah, was yeah. deaf. This, this, one, this one judge from this court found me guilty. Big deal. Okay, well, this we're getting into the the shitty part of the video, so yep, here we go. Hopefully, you can just power through this. Mm -hmm. He judged. The woman's always right. All you got to do, a woman makes a claim in most states that the husband abused her. He's guilty. He's going to jail. That's why you're um, in jail right now, Kent. Right. Also, does he know how hard it is to prove cases of assault? Like those are thrown out most of the time. Well, this okay. Maybe maybe I don't. He said in most states. Maybe I don't know the actual statistics in, in U.S. states, and maybe it's like vastly different over there. But certainly over here, like to prove assault of any kind and domestic assault is like notoriously difficult. It's not something that like a woman goes into court and she says he did it, and then they just slap on the cuffs and that's it. Yeah, he's trying to say that in America the legal system favors uh, the victim when it's a woman, which is just not true. It's pretty much the opposite, especially yeah. if the uh, guy in the situation has a lot of money or is a powerful per person, then mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of times it ruins her life, you know, because or, or she loses a lot of money from the legal fees. It's it's messed up. But yeah, he, he says, oh, well, the guy always goes to jail. Can't you didn't go to jail. So what you're saying is not true, even in your own example. So yeah, he's guilty until proven innocent in most cases. Isn't that the truth? How many have experienced that before? Yeah. Okay. Emma. Is he is he asking his like audience how many of them have been to jail for assault? Because to get people to raise their hands and say, "Yeah, most of us have been to jail for assault," it's like a really yeah. weird thing and, to do. And he didn't go to jail. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know very weird. He has since filed a notice of appeal, which is why he's not currently serving a sentence. Here's the appeal document so you can see. Notice is hereby given that the above named defendant, Kent Hovind, appeals to the circuit court from the judgment of conviction entered by the above direct court, adjudging the defendant to be guilty of the offence of DV Assault 3rd, and as punishment therefore, sentencing the defendant as follows. One year in jail to serve 30 days. Keep in mind, Emma, this has nothing to do with evolution. You're wasting time. It's called an ad hominem attack. I was not guilty, but even on I my mean, video about evolution. Right, I've gone yeah. totally off the rails. It's not my and video about how Kent Hovind and Matt Powell are awful people, and this is just one example of that. Why has he decided that it's about evolution? Is he just... Does, has he convinced himself? Like, I'm trying to work out if Kent is, like, just a completely unforgiving, callous manipulator, or if he's actually, like, neurologically something is going on in his head. I, I can't decide. Uh, well, I, I think Kent has a very one track mind, like the neural pathways of his head are extremely set in stone to where he just mm -hmm. wants to say the same things over and over again. He just wants to have the same debates again and again. And he doesn't want to talk about this stuff, obviously. So he just wants to steer things back to creation versus evolution because he he's like, oh, well, that's what I'm good at. He thinks. Mm. Um, <laughs> but you also said that you would do ad hominems at the beginning of this video. I don't think this is one, but you also said that, so. Yeah. And if the court found me guilty, a lot of innocent people have been found guilty and, and how many Jews died in Nazi Germany? If we're doing what? Just because somebody finds you guilty and sentences you to death even doesn't mean you're guilty. 
duh, study some history. Look at the dumb. Uh, comparing right, yourself should... <laughs> to the victim of the Holocaust, Kent, is again, offensive. Again, how many times has he done this? It, it's either that or the enemy is like Hitler. <laughs> it's either the atheists are like Hitler, or he and his friends are like the Jews in Nazi Germany. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> Because, because a court found him guilty of his own crimes. Like, does does he think that we should just never consider anyone guilty then? Because, well, study some history. People of innocent people have been found guilty before. Therefore, everyone ever who's been who's been found guilty is must be innocent. Like what? Mm -hmm. Some things your kings and queens in England have done over the years. How many innocent people got their heads chopped off? Because we're just daring to not bow down to the king. For not daring to, in a lot of cases, for not daring to adhere to the Christian laws of the time. Yes. We're going to skip how, over that part. I'm responsible how, for the kings and queens. Christianity, nothing to do with it. <laughs> right. It's exactly what I was thinking when I saw this. How many people have been executed for not following uh, the right religion mm -hmm. or the right version of Christianity? Like the Quakers, people have been tortured for that or killed. The Inquisitions or the Crusades. <sighs> yeah, a hundred percent. It's such a weird and like he's obsessed with the King James Bible, so surely he's aware of the historical because he, he loves British kings and queens or whatever, or he hates them because of all the death and then all British people are responsible for that. I don't know, but um, if he's so obsessed with them, then he must be aware of King James's political agenda and getting that particular Bible uh, pushed so far and wide and why it's so popular. Just think there's a bit of a double standard going on in Kent's weird grabbing at history. Yeah. Or Queen. Days, fine, $500. Costs and restitution, $2,124.72. And they've demanded trial by jury here. The word on the street is that nothing will happen until the new year, which I... Probably nothing will happen until summer, the way the court system is here. That's okay. I'm ready. This time I'm going to give a defense. Cindy knows full well. She waited nine months to file the charge. It's very Hello. common. Yeah, this is a really common argument against people who are victims of sexual assault that they didn't immediately uh, go to the police. So that means it didn't happen. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn Kent. I'm going to turn this argument around on Kent later in the video. Fantastic. Expect to be true. So we'll just, we'll, we'll just keep an eye out and see what happens. Shall we? God knows Kent has a history of abusing the legal system. He now, Emma, that's a lie. When have I ever abused the legal system? Okay, so there are recordings of Kent when he was in jail back in like 2012 or whatever, uh, when he's talking about how he's going to sue Scott Schneider, the IRS agent, repeatedly and mm -hmm. haunt him for the rest of his life. Uh, Kent threatened to file a lawsuit against a female IRS agent who was trying to serve him papers to get him to pay back income taxes in the 90s, and he did sue her. Uh, Kent made a bad faith filing by declaring bankruptcy when he knew he wasn't bankrupt in order to get back some cars that had been seized by the IRS. And he also sued Rational Wiki because he didn't like the article they wrote about him. So abusing the legal system. There's plenty yeah. of examples. Lots of them. Kent likes to file frivolous lawsuits. Yep. To be specific now, I'd like to hear this. And why are you wasting all this time on this topic? But since you did it and I'm whacking you tonight, here we go. It's my video. to drag everything out as long as possible as though that's going to somehow absolve him of his crimes. There's no crime to be absolved of, Emma. So you've already judged me guilty, haven't you, before the trial even came? You never even heard all the evidence, did you, Emma? And you've already acted as judge, haven't you, Emma? And executioner. Yeah. The trial already did happen and the judge acted as judge and found you guilty now you're appealing that verdict but the judge acted as judge emma is not acting as judge just because people are commenting on your guilty verdict and that makes you mad well it, you already got the verdict so you can't say the yeah. trial didn't happen i'd also love to know how that makes me his executioner <laughs> 
I, like I'm I, coming for him with a big scythe ready to <laughs> carry out judgment. <laughs> that just sounds awesome. Uh, it does. <laughs> does sound kind of awesome. Yeah. While we're here and talking about his awful treatment of Cindy, because Kent is a biblical literalist, I'd like to take a moment at exactly what the Bible says about divorce and remarriage. Malachi 2.16. I hate divorce, I do says too. the Lord God of Israel. I do too, Emma. I've never divorced anybody. They divorced me. What do you do? I never divorced my first wife. We were virgins on our honeymoon, Emma. How many people have you uh, had sexual intercourse with, male or female, Emma? So I told my mum about this. <laughs> I was like, because she doesn't watch all of YouTube and she she likes MLM videos and uh, the, the rest is kind of a lot to keep up with. So I was like, yeah, I've been having this weird feud with this old Christian man on the internet. And then he asked me how much sexual intercourse I've had. And she was like, ew, pervert. <laughs> I was like, I know. I want to know, like, this is, so Ken is, Ken is a biblical man. He's uh, supposed to be, a, and I know it's not always easy, but he's supposed to be attempting to be a good Christian man. He's a lot older than me. Um, and he's uh, a preacher with a position of authority. In what universe does he think it's appropriate to completely unrelated to the context as well, to ask me about my sexual history. That is so deeply inappropriate, especially for a man claiming to be a godly preacher. That is beyond inappropriate and completely unrelated to the point. Yeah, he's, he's complaining about, oh, we're not talking about uh, evolution. What does this have to do with evolution? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's I, what does it I have mean, to do with his remarriages <laughs> yeah i i don't i don't understand this uh this is he, he's again it's more humble bragging i guess he thinks it's bragging or i mean i'm sure he doesn't think it's bragging but he thinks it's some sort of accomplishment although i don't believe him um mm -hmm. but i think we should just move on yeah i agree Huh? Answer the question. No. How many? How many have you done Why outside of marriage, I? Emma? How many have I I've done? Never. Never. Uh, so and, and, and he mentions, I'm sorry, he mentions men or women like. <sighs> yeah, I've got I've got two separate tallies. I better go and check my books, Kent, because clearly, <laughs> clearly what he's trying to do is like demonize me as a person by making weird assumptions about my sexual history because I'm not a Christian and therefore he assumes I have sex outside of marriage. And I guess his assumption is that I've had loads and that makes me a worse person. All of which is just complete, like nothing to do with anything, all based on assumption and utterly meaningless in the scheme of things. It just comes across as pervy. Like why is he thinking about sex in relation to this conversation? It's not relevant. It's mm -hmm. weird it's just not appropriate it's really not okay like can't it's like we can talk about debates about christianity or evolution or atheism that's fine i i don't even mind a little bit of personal insults and jabbing obviously i've made fun of kent on my channel a lot so mm -hmm. if you want if he wants to make fun of me on a channel you know i always say don't dish it out if you can't take it you know what i mean so i'm okay with sure. a little bit of ri good-natured ribbing it in within a reason but this is crossing a line uh and yeah. it's not okay like i will this wouldn't be okay for any content creator to say to another content creator because there's no way that this would ever be relevant to any discussion unless you're actually talking about that type of subject with somebody who's comfortable discussing that but to just bring it up out of the blue does he actually mm -hmm. expect you to answer the question i don't know I think, honestly, I think he probably does. I think he probably is like, oh, well, these, none of these atheists care about talking about this kind of stuff. So he's like expecting me to be like, yeah, I've had sex with 80 people. And then everyone on his side can be like, ha ha, she's evil. Like, I genuinely think that's what he expected. And not for everybody to be like, why would you ask? That is so inappropriate. Had sex outside of marriage. Never one time. I was virgin on my honeymoon, faithful for 42 years. When I came home from prison, my wife said, you're sleeping in that room over there now. W why? Because you sent her to jail, Kent. That's why. Why, why do you think? 
I'm such an innocent little baby. Why would she? When I came home from prison, he says, says that so casually as well. Like, he, like he's still completely innocent. When I got out of the joint. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe my wife reacted I'm differently the to me after gonna... prison. Yeah. <laughs> Come after you again. Okay. My son said, Dad, while you were gone, I put everything in my name. You got to pay 600 a month to live in your bedroom over there. I did that for nine months. I think I was pretty patient, Emma. Never have I touched another woman I wasn't married to. So? Ever. Can you say that? I married Mary Toko. We had a wonderful marriage for nine months. I came home one day and she was gone. Well, I find it kind of interesting, Kent, that you knew Mary Toko and you knew her phone number back in the early 2000s. Uh, Mary Toko, T-O-C-C-O, -C -C lives in Michigan and travels and speaks on the dangers of vaccinations. Here's Mary Toko's phone number if you want to call her, or marytoko.com. That's a little bit weird. I'm sure that, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm sure that the fact that you got out of jail and then uh, when you, when, before the divorce was even finalized, you were already talking to Mary Toko. I'm sure that had nothing to do with the fact that you already knew her from years earlier, but I'm, I'm sure you were totally faithful to Joe, but I'm not even going to, I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. Steve, you were there, weren't you? And we, we drove all the way to North, South Carolina. Mary, what happened? What did she say, Steve? Do you remember that? I don't want to go to jail like Joe. Been too long ago. But she was scared, again, that the IRS was going to come after me again. Which is totally fair. And obviously, the fact that you continue to act the way you do in regards to your finances is why this keeps happening, Kent. Yeah. So you, He's I not mean, really making a good like defense of himself here. He's like, well, I've never divorced anyone. They all divorced me <laughs> it's like for, you know, variations of the same reasons. Like, well, that doesn't make you sound like a better person, actually, Ken. It's like, I, I didn't pay my taxes. And then the IRS arrested me and my, my first wife got sent to jail for a year. And then I got out and she, she didn't want to have sex with me because she said, I don't want to get arrested for, for you not paying taxes again. And then she divorced me. And then my second wife, she divorced me because she said, I don't want to get arrested for you not paying taxes. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't cause any of that. Yeah, it couldn't be his fault. Yeah, Kent is eternally innocent. Mm -hmm. I didn't leave her. She left me. And then Cindy and I were very happily married for about two and a half years. And then she went berserk off the, off the rails over a variety of things. I didn't leave her. She left me. I didn't leave. I kept inviting her back in spite of her yelling and screaming and hitting and cursing at hit, hitting me. I never hit her. She hit me a bunch of times. Well, Kent, uh, the fact that you waited and never filed charges, by your logic, that means it didn't happen. So Yeah. Sorry, Kent. Can't have your cake and eat it, too. Emma, stop. Just stop. Okay. Well, I'm not finished. Okay. There's a stop website what? called Got Answers that I've always found really useful for in-depth answers to biblical questions. I agree. So I'll share their explanation and link that down below. There's going to be a lot of links in the description today, I will try and keep it as organized as I can. The controversy over whether divorce and remarriage is allowed according to the Bible revolves primarily around Jesus's words in Matthew 5.32 and 19.9. The phrase, except for marital unfaithfulness, is the only thing in scripture that possibly gives God's permission for divorce and remarriage. So I didn't divorce anybody. But he did remarry. After they divorced me, Emma. Mm -hmm. So what's his point? Yeah, so um, uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 15, uh, in the King James, it says, but if the unbelieving depart, let, the, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. Uh, so <clears throat> this verse, it's talking about sanctification, which is like the same thing as salvation or being saved. But that's not the same thing as a marriage vow. So Kent, uh, he seems to think that this verse is referring to the, his wife's belief in the marriage vows, but really it's talking about belief in the gospel, about if Jesus is saved or not. And Kent tries to say, well, they didn't believe in the marriage vows, so uh, I can let them go biblically based on this verse. And he does the same thing, justifying not just divorce, but remarriage um, based on other verses like 
1 Timothy 3, 2. And uh, it's not what the verse actually means. He's totally twisting mm -hmm. the meaning to suit his own purposes. Like it, it, yeah. when it says unbeliever, it's not believing in the marriage vows. Like it's just obviously that's not what it means. Yeah. Oh, you got it backwards. I didn't divorce anybody. I didn't leave anybody. Didn't hit anybody. Wasn't unfaithful to anybody. Emma, you really got it screwed up here, but let's go ahead. Some understand. I think, it's, um, I think there's something almost, I almost want to say like a Freudian slip because I don't mention unfaithfulness or hitting or anything like that. He brings that up on his own. I'm talking about the fact that Ken goes through divorce and then decides to remarry instead of remaining single and serving God on his own. And he just adds in things like, oh, I've never been, I've never cheated on any wives. And it's like, nobody said you did. So why are you so defensive of that point? Mm -hmm. I believe it's similar to when he says, oh, I don't think about you all the time, Emma. It's like, uh, we didn't, nobody okay. said that you did. <laughs> yeah. Which I hope that he doesn't because that makes, that concerns me. I don't want to know what he thinks about. Okay, I'm just going to move on. In 7.15, as another exception, allowing remarriage of an unbelieving spouse divorces a believer. However, the context does not mention remarriage, but only says a believer is not bound to continue a marriage if an unbelieving spouse wants to leave. That is not what it says, Emma. I've got it for you here. Let's see. Let me get he to did, this one. I just want to just want to remind everybody that like 30 seconds ago, he agreed with me that Got Answers is a reputable website for biblical information so <laughs> his problem shouldn't be with me it should be with got answers which he just claimed right. to agree with me is a good source it's a good point mm -hmm. uh she's going to go i might have my slides a little bit out of order here uh let's see not the slides cindy has 384 subscribers she interviewed or she didn't interview she took quotes from my first wife joe married 42 years faithful never touched another woman 322 views of that one she interviewed Exposed Brady Byram, 261 views. Cindy was getting hundreds, thousands of views when she was doing tours of our science center. She cut her own throat for the ministry's sake. She, nobody's listening to her now, and she goes to atheists to get support. Exposed by Savannah. You want to hear the truth about Savannah? I'll put you on the phone with her husband, who called me last week, her ex-husband. You want to hear the truth about Savannah? I don't want to get involved in all this patent place, or what do they call it, uh, the soap opera stuff, but... Ken and why are you? Clearly. This doesn't, what's this got to do with anything? I don't know. And it just gets worse. I also am not sure why Kent doesn't show the views uh, of my interview with Cindy, which is about 5,000 views, or the Apologia mm -hmm. video, which is 155K, which is t talking all about Cindy. A lot of people saw that. So, yeah. And well, that doesn't suit his point. <laughs> Yeah, it, and when she was doing the Science Center videos, it wasn't her channel. It was your channel, Kent. So yeah. I think, if anything, more people are listening to Cindy now than ever. Nobody was listening to her before. After I did the interview with Cindy, that's when everybody started paying attention to her, I think. Um, but he's not going to mention that. He, no. he talks about... I think she re-uploaded the video on her channel, and he shows the views of that one, but not the original video. Of course. Revealed by the panty incident. Cindy, a lot of people come use my wash machine right there, right? I was getting out of the shower, went to my place in, in the cabinet where all the underwear is, and there was some woman's underwear in there. Oh, she interviewed AJ. Oh, wow, 400 views. 200, let's see. Panty incident. There were some grandma panties in there. I knew they weren't mine. They weren't your panties, Ken? This is... I'd never seen them I before. I don't even know Probably what got to mixed say. Up in the laundry. <laughs> so I took them in the other bathroom where Cindy was taking a shower, dropped them on the counter, I think, I don't remember, and, and left. She then, much later, raised a big deal. What's these women's panties doing in here? Uh, I don't know. What are they doing in my closet? Those aren't mine. That's the panty incident. Okay. Anyway, back to First Corinthians seven. If the unbelieving what, depart, what, what? What does any of that have to do with his divorces and remarriages? First of all, I don't want to make it a soap opera, but here's all this random personal information about my life and underwear. And second of all, 
what the hell is his laundry set up there that loads of random women are using his, like he's doing his own personal laundry and some women's pants accidentally end up in it. What is this this weird world of Kent Hovind that he's just bringing up these little bits of weird information that just make you question him a thousand times more than you would do originally? It's like, yeah, I, I, would, I didn't talk about any of this. I had no knowledge of any panty incident. And then suddenly he's flashing pants on the screen and being like, well, oh, here's the thing about the women's underwear that was in my stuff. What are you doing? <laughs> it's like, I thought we were talking about First Corinthians. What happened to that? Yeah. I guess your slides really are out of order, Kent. Yeah. I don't know why that was in his, why is the, why is the pants in his slides anyway? <laughs> And, and and if we could just talk about this weird section for a second. First of all, you're both taking a shower at the same time in separate bathrooms. Really it's, weird. Strikes me as not true. Second of all, you, m- you move the underwear into her, onto her bathroom countertop, but she didn't say anything about it until much, much later. Why not just get rid of them? Like... And I don't believe you that they were granny panties, Kent. That sounds like a lie that, that you're trying to make it seem like it wasn't some younger woman. I don't believe you. I think this whole story is, uh, there's some truth to it because I know Cindy was the one who brought this up. But now I'm curious. See, now I'm more curious about this. And exactly. I'll have to, I want to watch the original video by Cindy or I could just ask her. Um, I guarantee you this, she would tell me that this story is much of crap. Yeah. Let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage. It doesn't say they can't get remarried. It says they're not under bondage. If your if your spouse or if your partner leaves you, you're not under bondage. If, if you're an unbeliever, partner. that means they don't believe in their their vows, oh, their no. marriage vows. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it specifically mentions remarriage, doesn't it? Like not to do that. I know there are other verses that talk about that. Yeah, it's split across like a load of different verses. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, you already you already showed him this. Like, it's not that's not what unbelieving means. Yeah, doesn't mean not saved. Jesus called his own disciples unbelievers when they went to the sepulcher. He said, "You fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken." He's talking to his own disciples. They were unbelievers. So if the unbelieving depart, Cindy departed, didn't she? How hard did we try to get her back? All the time. She's four miles from here right now, making anti Kenthoven videos that nobody's watching. You are bearing false witness against me. So is Cindy. There was no incident with the panties other than I found them in my closet, and they ain't mine. That, that's it. End of story. Why on earth do they bring this up? Why does she bring this up? False witness, false witness. Even Jesus had a lot to say about don't bear false witness. That's what you are doing, Emma. No, it's not like I just, one more time for Ken, I didn't bring up this weird panty thing. You brought that up, Ken. I don't even know what you're talking about, but now I want to know because you've dubbed yourself in. But um, we literally proved just a couple of the lies Ken Hovind has told throughout his life. So it's ironic to go off about uh, not bearing false witness when that's like his entire MO. Really? Yeah. <sighs> Get this button in the right spot. Here we go. Okay. Given Hoven's three divorces and four marriages, don't... Huh? I only had one divorce and she divorced me. In Florida, you can't stop a divorce. If one person wants it, they get it. That's not true. Uh, <clears throat> in Florida, they will try and get the two parties to seek marriage counseling. Uh, they don't. It's not just instant divorce. Mm-hmm. So Kent, Kent is the one who made no effort to stop it, not Joe. That's another lie. Check the Florida laws, Emma. <laughs> I didn't divorce. There's nothing you did to stop it. Yeah. Is he okay? The other Is two he marriages gassy? were annulled. The believer, unbeliever left. There was no divorce involved. So, Emma, you are incorrect. Don't remotely meet those requirements. I wonder what his excuse is as a biblical literalist. Now, I'd like to know what this has to do with evolution and creation, Emma, which is what your real gripe is. But you, instead, you go to the ad hominem attack. Was it been seven and a half, almost eight minutes now? No. That's, no. Your, your real gripe was evolution and creation? Did he, oh, like, wow. read the video description? Did he, did he look at the title? Because uh, that, that's, an, that's another lie. 
Kent. You yeah. shouldn't bear false witness, Kent, and you're li you're lying right now. That's okay. Let's go ahead. Kent recently disappeared for a week or so, leaving Professor Powell to act <laughs> as his receptionist. How, how long was I gone? Five days? A week or so? You exaggerate, Emma, but that's okay. <laughs> Is that exaggerating, really? Like... <laughs> Ken. A week or it's so. Like, it's like he's Five got days. he's got so little that he's like really grasping at straws. He like has to disagree with everything. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I went to South Florida and met with an attorney, a longtime attorney friend of longtime friend of mine, an attorney down there, brilliant guy. Uh, According to Powell. Not not a longtime attorney friend, a longtime friend and an attorney. I had to correct that for some reason. He was on vacation, but in actuality, when Kent returned, he revealed that he had been in Miami discussing his appeal with his lawyer. Brace yourselves to be extremely embarrassed at what they've come up with. I spent five hours day before yesterday with an attorney uh, in Miami. He said, here's what she needs to do. Very simple. Publish a simple letter like this. I, Cindy Lincoln, hereby apologize for lying about my former husband, Kent Hovind, body slamming me at a year, a year ago. He did not body slam me. I made that story up to make him look bad. I stand by that before God. That is true. She made that story up, Emma. Cindy, you know you made that story up. I did not body slam you. You were screaming and yelling and attacking me. You dove at me to grab my phone. I simply pushed you off to the side. You hit the shelf, hit the floor. Then you screamed again on the floor. When you finally got up out of breath from screaming, not from being body slammed, you slammed the chairs down. They weigh 22 pounds apiece. How many have seen the broken tile in my kitchen today? Come take a look. She did that. She was not body slammed. She wasn't hurt in any way. She went to the chiropractor one time. Then the next week she had a car accident. And she went to a chiropractor a bunch of times after that and wants to give me the bill for all that. It's from the car accident. I didn't body slam her. What a few. No, the court wants you to pay her bill, Kent. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I don't believe anything you're saying, so. And again, he's the one offering up this extra information. I don't know. I don't know anything about Cindy going to the chiropractor or that corroborating her story. Kent's offering that information up himself, like he thinks he has to defend it, like he's covering for something. Yeah, uh, I I have seen the chiropractor uh, and the doctor documents. Um, I think like so she did. She did seek out. Uh, a doctor, but I don't know about the, the car accident and, I, and I've never heard her mention a car accident. And I don't know why he's talking about chairs and some broken tile. This is all stuff that he's added. See, he just seems like he wants to have as much information as he can just to confuse everything and muddy the water. Which is a really common tactic of liars to add way, like really, really over you know exaggerate the small information in a story especially in court that's like how you know somebody's lying <laughs> steve how long have you been when i almost nearly broke my arm about a week before that the steel beam one of these steel beams had fallen in the dining hall we're building my right arm's holding my phone my left arm's hurting badly from the beam falling i still got the scar right here i did not body slam her i'm capable of body slamming people sure who isn't but i didn't she's lying as you can clearly hear on the audio recordings he made, I was the aggressor the entire time. He was calm and simply protecting his phone and his body by pushing me off to the side as I lunged at him. Exactly how it happened. Exactly. This, this guy's right. Emma, pay attention to him. He's right. Okay. I behaved very badly that day and I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm also very sorry I went to the atheist websites for support. <laughs> I love that I, I mentioned in this, this letter, like that just cracks me up. <laughs> I just that that is just the weirdest. I couldn't believe it when I saw that that he was like trying to get her to write a letter. It's like I'm sorry, I went to atheists for support. <laughs> yeah, but when but when he says, "Oh, she went to an atheist website," like he's specifically talking about the interview she did with me because that was the first time Cindy like talked to anybody about it. Um, yeah, and he so he said that a lot, you know. Oh, he's so offended that she went to an atheist uh, website, even though YouTube, she went to an atheist YouTube channel. YouTube is yeah. not an atheist website. 
Um, it makes it but, sound like she's on forums reaching out specifically to atheists or something. Yeah, but it's like, well, maybe atheists were more willing to help her and actually listen to her than the Christians in her life, which she has said is is what happened. So yeah, that's not my fault. <laughs> I encourage all to visit there and listen to Dr. Owen's amazing messages that have changed countless lives. I also ask that you support him and his ministry financially and that they, as they seek to get the gospel out. We're supposed to believe that a lawyer came up with this? The, the absolute hubris and ego of that last part. Not only does he call himself doctor, but actually saying, oh, I, I, th I think people should uh, give Dr. Hoven uh, money for his amazing seminar. Isn't it's like when he talks and about... <laughs> like, and, and this is supposed to be what? What she's giving to the court? Like, what, is she supposed to be publishing this in a newspaper to try and drive traffic to his park? What's his agenda? Yeah. It's so weird. I, I don't know. I think he knows that it was only ever going to be on YouTube. And I don't know what how Ken Hovind's brain works, but it's bizarre. Very um, weird. But I love this section of your video. It cracks me up. You can believe whatever you want. I mean, you will. I know that. Okay. Ask, well, I'm not going to give his name right now. We're still working on some other projects. But yes, uh, this, this is what Cindy ought to do. She should apologize for lying about me. She should apologize for claiming I body slammed her. She should apologize for the damage she's done to the cause of Christ by going to atheist websites. Yes, she won't. She can't retract now. She's too deep into it. We're going to have to go plug it out in court. I don't know how it's going to come out in court. That's a good choice of words to use in a, a domestic assault case. We're going to, I'm going to go slug it out with my ex-wife in court. Mm -hmm. He's very, like, he, he uses very aggressive language just in general. Yeah. Whack an atheist. You need to get whacked. You know, it's like just, it's just a very, and, and he's talked like, I've seen him. I'm sure he's done it more than I've seen, but I've seen him like three or four times talk about how he's never beat up a woman in his life, sort of implying that he has beat up men. I mean, like, I would never hurt a woman. I could if I wanted to. I could knock somebody out if I wanted to. It's like, I don't know. It's, there's just something weird about that that makes me think yeah. that maybe he is like genuinely a violent person. I don't know. Yeah, he threatened to body slam me. Uh, I'd like to see Kent try, but um, he, yeah, how, the way he slams his keyboard down when he when he, uh, he abuses that keyboard, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and like he's stares like a, the camera down, like Emma. He's like a thirteen-year-old in an MMO. It's like, Gah! yeah, mom. <laughs> but I'm gonna call in five hundred witnesses if I have to. I didn't do anything wrong to that woman. I didn't leave her. I didn't curse at her. I didn't hit her. I didn't body slam her. I provided for her. She wasn't required to come to staff meetings. Everybody else is in there 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning. Not Cindy. She worked her own schedule, whatever. I just, okay, yes, ma'am. Slept in the other bedroom 60% of the last year. Just angry. Okay. Did you, did you do the math? I never forced myself on her. I'm a sweet, gentle husband. She, I'm sorry, she was wrong. And yes, she ought to write that letter. Tell her for me. I can't talk to her. She has me banned from talking to her. For what? Good. Anyway. It's very infantilizing the way he asks her to talk about herself, but that's women in this kind of church. That's unfortunately what happens to them. We know how condescending Kent is to women. How, how condescending am I to women? Do you women here? Do I condescend? Am I condescending to you? You work here? That's a good freeze frame right there. I'm very sorry. I've been very bad. Kent is wonderful. But to add in, you should all go and visit Dr. Hoven's amazing place and give him all your money because he's the best person in the world. <laughs> I when have that. I ever said people should give me all their money or I'm the best person in the world? Emma. You just told people to give you money. <laughs> is this an exaggeration or a lie? Maybe, the, maybe both. Okay, go ahead. Kent's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. I know that was super cringy. All right, now that we're caught up on Kent's legal entanglements, it is time to review Kent's latest live stream content about me and correct the <laughs> mistakes he's made. Like I said, there are going to be a bunch of links in the description. If you are interested and you want to catch up on all of Kent's most recent legal entanglements and just what the hell is going on with him and his ex-wives and stuff recently, there is a Paulogia video featuring Atheist Jr. that goes... I'll debate Pologia any day, won't I? Pologia, come on. And it's time to see the real you, not the cartoon character with the muscles, okay? Call me, 855-BIG-DINO, Pologia, open challenge.
when you want to debate again. You start off, give the best evidence you know of for evolution. I'll counter that. Then you give best evidence number two. I'll counter that. Fair enough. Come on. My channel, your Back channel, both evolution. channels. Neutral channel. Come on, Pelogia. It's not about evolution. Brave it's not about evolution. <laughs> <laughs> and he's never debated Pelogia. Pal, uh, Pal, Can't always pronounce it wrong. I and the whole cartoon avatar thing is so stupid. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you saw it. Like, at the very beginning of that video, uh, where we actually show how Kent had a cartoon version yeah. of himself. Like, I yeah. specifically sent Paul that clip because I wanted him to include it. So, <laughs> yeah, that that was really good. That is such a good video, though. Thank you. I yeah, uh, I'm so happy with how that video turned out. Like. Um, we spent a lot of time working on that, but yeah, Paul is is, is awesome to work with. So um, I would I would so love to it. see you guys collab. Also, that would be awesome. That would be pretty sweet. <laughs> Warrior and AJ oh, Atheist Junior with his seven viewers. I'll <laughs> debate him too anytime. Both of you together, half my brain tied behind my back. Goes into detail. It's really really good. I think I've I think I've grown my viewership pretty well in the last year, if I do say so myself. I mean, I wonder I what uh, I mean. This is like a this is more like a project for viewers, I guess. But like, I wonder if you compared like your social blades or something with like how uh, you've like increased over the last year and how Kent has sort of just not. Yeah, like, I bet I bet you would win. I'll look at your seven that. viewers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll link that down below. Let's get let's get back into Whack an Atheist and see what Kent has to say about me today. It gets a little bit complicated because he's shouted me out in about five different videos since the last Whack an Atheist Wednesday we did, which was not very long ago. So the first one in which he mentioned me is now privated because Kent Hovind, YouTube. Fortunately, Robert. Hey Steve, was there a video we did about her that had to be privatized? I don't even know how to do that. I don't even know how to do that, so it ain't my fault, Emma. That doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything? No. What's she upset about? Oh, Steve says. <laughs> Steve says it doesn't mean anything, so it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Could, could, because if a video came out about you and you go to check it one day and it's not there anymore, that doesn't mean it was privated. Even though YouTube says this video is unavailable, it's been yeah. privated. Okay. Well, yeah, okay. But Beatty continues to document Kent's online presence. So we have some of the comments that he said that I wanted to respond to. Essentially, he's upset at atheists for constantly talking about his dissertation being bullshit. For some Emma, we don't put that stuff in our hand that you just put in your mouth. What, words? Yeah, he doesn't like to hold words. He's afraid of holding words in his hand. Wah, wah, can't cry more. We use it for <laughs> fertilizer. You pick it up with a shovel. You don't put it in your mouth, Emma. You really need some help with the English language. I'll help you, okay? I'm not very good at it, but I'm better than you. Okay, go ahead. For some reason, he really focused uh, on the fact that... Lie. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, he's not better at the English language than me. I'm just going to... And I'm not like an English... You know, I'm not a student of English. I, any of my English literature friends, compare me and compare Kent Hovind. I'll send you my dissertation and I'll send you Kent Hovind's dissertation and we'll see who's better at English. Thank you. I'm sorry, yeah. that claim is like absurd. I mean, it doesn't matter, but I was in the English Honors Society when I was in high school. Uh, so if we're, going, if we're going to be measuring things, Kent, I'll, I'll just claim that. Uh, I'll show you my certificate later, Kent. Laugh at the fact that it starts, hello, my name is Kent Hovind. It doesn't matter that the rest of it is horribly written, that the <laughs> formatting is dog shit. Here you go again. I'm sorry, I should have deleted this. I don't know how to delete stuff. But None of that matters. So he's talking about Patriot University, the absolutely unaccredited, definitely not state-sanctioned university. Emma, was Charles Darwin a scientist, yes or no? I feel like, um, I could give you know, you a in the law. Matrix... Uh, when you get deja vu in the matrix it's because they've changed something that's how i feel watching kent's videos like i swear we've had this exact conversation i swear he said exactly this already but it's just because ken actually repeats himself five times in a single video <laughs> yeah oh. i don't 
really understand the the uh, connection because it, it almost seems like he it's like a self own because he's saying, oh well, Char- Charlie Darwin only had a degree in theology, uh, but Kent's degree is in Christian education. So wouldn't that mean that he isn't a scientist or can't do science or his degree isn't valid? Because if he thinks exactly. Darwin's degree isn't valid, then by uh, definition, that would mean his isn't either. So it's a really weird, I think he thinks it's the other way around because he's trying, he's trying to say, well, if you're saying that my degree is invalid, that means Darwin's because we both have a degree in theology, even though Darwin went to Cambridge, which is one of the most prestigious schools in the country. Not, it's not like Patriot Bible trailer in the <laughs> desert. Yeah. On a list of people who are famous inventors who didn't even graduate from college at all, let alone go on beyond. Okay, now I just right, got the, the deja po- vu. Yeah. Where he said <laughs> that the, before. He did say exactly that. And the point is, they aren't pretending to be doctors. They aren't yeah. pretending to have four doctorates. Ken is. That's the difference. And is he saying that he didn't graduate high school? Like, what are you trying to say with that? Like, are you admitting you don't actually have a good education? In college, a long list of famous people. How many famous politicians barely made it through high school? You guys are so hung up on this degree. I worked hard for my degree. If you don't like it, call me Kent. No problem, Emma, no problem. The cannot give real doctorates just to remind everybody this is him talking about them i asked them i would like to do my dissertation i would like to do my dissertation <laughs> what would you like? okay, i'm going to fast University forward a little bit here because she curses here. and swears Brother but, uh, Irvin, your creation seminar needs to be in writing yeah Hopkins my seminar was put in writing transcribed the whole thing and Same then she joke. gripes about how later i stuff. say i show in there in this book she's right I and did edit just, that to say in this book because it was now a book. Emma. And then he could have corrected some of the spelling mistakes. So what he's saying is that he had it transcribed. He had his creation seminar transcribed and then didn't edit it. And that I didn't say I didn't edit it. So that's why he's responding to it. In Christian education, except not a real doctorate because it's not an accredited university. It's that makes a difference. Emma, if someone yes, comes from another Kent. country, if someone from England comes over to America that has a doctor's degree in England, is he still a doctor here? Because our university, we, our system didn't accreditate. Yes. Didn't get- so, didn't accreditate. Um, <laughs> yes, Ken. <laughs> yes, they're a real doctor and you're not. Yeah, Moving on. Um, <laughs> What's your next question? <laughs> schools in the UK are, I believe, accredited by the national government. So if a school is accredited over there, it's likely that the degree would be accepted over here, especially if it's a school like Cambridge. So, yeah. But again, I, this, you didn't like the situation is not like what you're describing. Like you didn't get a decree in the UK, Ken. You get like, accreditation to your, your university. Yeah. Just stop. And and Emma? like Emma. he he clearly, he's trying to talk about this while demonstrating no understanding of our education system either. Because when you talk about like, um, you know, he doesn't have a bibliography and everything. So he probably wouldn't understand anyway. But um, we use American citation systems um, in the UK. We use, well, I used Harvard when I was at university. Um, like. The idea that if you did a doctorate in the UK and that it wouldn't count in the US is completely preposterous. It just shows that he has no idea what he's talking about. Does a doctor from England who comes to America still get to be called doctor even though it wasn't accredited university here? Just because your people don't accredit it, I don't care. I think I learned a lot from the courses at Patriot. If you don't like it, okay. And it wasn't in that building they keep showing the trailer. It was a part of a, a church in Colorado Springs when I did it. Later, after I'm done, they move out there, got their own separate place, and they keep showing that picture. It's got nothing to do with where I went, where I was. Anyway, let's go on here, Emma. We're almost done. Thank God. <laughs> I got a, five more places. I got to fast forward for her cursing. Because it's transcribed from a seminar. He She's going to spend all her time covering. talking about in this book, in this book. Emma, Explains you don't what's get it. In e- yes. Ken Irvin's lying. Now, listen, I, I could forgive say, in this somebody book. for forgetting exactly how they wrote something in 1991. That. That's very forgivable. On screen, where it's there, is next to him. On a. That's something else. Oh, see that? That thing's introduction. He explains where it came all of this. from. Yeah. Ken. 
We've I, just, I just love the comments that get that make it through while he's trying to skip and it's just like he's he's still a liar he's still lying like i just love that part of the video yeah it's the, the part where she talks about the fossils the of his either way he's lying it's just <laughs> footage like i say he lied. either way i'm lying emma that's all you can see you're desperate so you don't want to deal with the fact that i've exposed your religion of evolution to be stupid you believe you came from a rock don't you emma no just, I'll give you over billions of years. You believe you came from a rock, don't you, Emma? Yes, yes, a yes or no? Okay, are you going to dodge? I that don't. One? I don't know what that. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm dodging. I don't know what that has to do with Kent's degrees being fake. He Kent's literally like repeats. He repeats it twice in a row. Like why? Like yeah, yeah. It, this entire video has just been. Let's talk about one thing, but oh, I want to talk about this other thing. But you're not talking about evolution, but I'm going to talk about Cindy's videos about me. But that, like, it's just all over the place. It's totally weird. Let's see. This she says all about dissertation. Whack an Atheist Wednesday response. I want to get to the part where she talks about fossils. I should have put the time code down. Emma, my dear child, I'm sure a lot of things. Child, that's for sure. Okay. Yeah, because your children don't stay in contact with you, Kent. <laughs> at least he said sorry, I guess. I don't, it didn't feel hey. very genuine, but at least he said sorry. Yeah, there's one. I mean, you'll have to take what you can get. I do love that yeah. mug, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. You believe, you accept the crazy idea, all the matter in the universe fit in a dot. Yes, you do. I'm a my dear child. You Look at the screenshot he chose. How rude. You accept the crazy idea. Have you seen the screenshots the atheists do about me? Yeah. Come on, Emma. Fair is fair. How do you like it? Fun, isn't it? I will say that I've done a, a lot of uh, thumbnails with Kent that have goofy screenshots. But the reason I started doing that is because when he, again, when he was making videos back and forth with Rachel Oates, he picked a ton of unflattering screenshots of her. That's when I saw him do that. That's when I started doing it. So, yeah. It's just like, uh, I'll just basically throw it right back at you, Kent. Like, and he is a lot better as a source of screenshots because Kent makes goofy faces every five seconds. Like, <laughs> true. Crazy. Imagine believing a T Rex turned into a chicken. Do you stop and imagine what you believe, Emma? Do you believe a T-Rex turned to a chicken? Yes or no? Over. There are so many no Emmas Kent. and Kents on the screen right now. I know. It's, it's getting a bit much. Like, yeah. not only did he already ask this exact question, but Ken is the one who believes in magic, not me. If mm -hmm. Ken's going to think anything's transforming, Ken believes that water transformed into wine and that fish is multiplied and people can walk on water. He's the one who believes things can turn into things. Not me. Yeah. Over millions, hundreds of millions of years, do you believe the T-Rex turned into a chicken? Yes or no, Emma? Think about it. My dear child, stop that, okay? Do you really, really believe that? Yes. You really, really believe you came from a dot. Glad you admitted it. That wasn't even the question. But it's like, okay, you got your answer, and now what? Now, do you really understand how stupid that is, Emma? I mean, not the way you're describing it, because you're just because you're misrepresenting evolution. How do I misrepresent it? I show right from the textbooks. Do they teach in these books that we came from a dot? He's like, where are my textbooks? I have to physically <laughs> show the book. <laughs> uh, okay, Kent, you, you can say that you're showing from textbooks that scientists teach, or the textbooks teach that humans came from rocks, but why don't you show an evolutionary biologist actually a video of them actually saying, oh, I think that we came from rocks because you can't, you'll only find people saying, no, we don't believe that you're misrepresenting evolution. So you have to show the textbooks and evolutionary textbooks don't mention the big bang either. Like this is what was part of the R and raw, like the back and forth video exchange debate. One of my favorite parts of that debate is when Aaron is showing different textbooks that are only about evolution and none of them mention the Big Bang. None of them mention the beginning of the universe. 
Mm-hmm. But Kent s- still says in that video, it's like you say, he, he'll lie when the evidence is like on screen right there. <laughs> yeah, he's got no shame. How many times have I showed it right on screen, Emma? Google it. How did the universe begin? You ought to be embarrassed. Like somebody exposed the stupid thing you believe. You ought to be. I'm trying to be nice about it. To make it sound sillier. So technically not really. Technically not really. We didn't come from a dot. Well, then Emma, where did the universe come from? I don't but, know. Yes, I believe. I don't which, know, but I, I trust in science. <laughs> I trust in science, which keeps changing, by the way, Kent. This is the thing is that we keep learning more and that helps us form new ideas. Kent is the one who has one specific definite idea that can be disproven. Yeah. And asking where the universe came from. I I know Kent isn't actually genuinely asking, uh, well, what, what do people think that science says about the beginning of the universe? Because if you actually talk to a cosmologist, they would say, we don't know anything before like 10 to the minus 34 seconds after the big bang started, if you want to say like began or started. So Mm -hmm. After cosmic expansion started, after that time period, that's when we actually know a great deal uh, about the expansion rate of the universe and what the early universe was like, how it was was hot and dense. And one of the things Kent says that's really annoying is he always says that, oh, like the earth and all the zebras were packed into a dot. Well, there wasn't matter in the early time of the universe because it was too hot and dense for atomic nuclei to form. So you didn't have solids, liquids, or gases. So you don't have gases, you don't have dust, you don't have stars or planets forming. You don't have matter. And even Kent knows that science says that the Earth formed many billions of years after the Big Bang started. So that just shows to me that he's lying about that. Yeah. Yeah, he's either lying or he's got like a childlike understanding of creation from like Bible school, like Sunday school, where it's like they play with the toy zebras next to the ark and it's like, okay, and then all the zebras were there. So where were the zebras to start with? It's like they, (laughs) the zebras weren't always there, Kent. That's not, that's not how it works. Okay. (laughs) Put up a picture of my face that looks very silly and look in the camera and laugh at how silly I am. But yes, I do believe that. And this is a waste of time. Not the truth. You can't handle the truth. The truth is everything, all the fossils are the same age. There's no such thing as a fossil record. There's no such thing as a fossil record. That is correct. None no, of the not. fossils talk. They find fossils by the probably even trillions, certainly billions of fossils have been found. None of them talk. None of them have a date stamped on them. Made by a clam in 72 million BC. They don't say that, Emma. Somebody's putting their interpretation. They also don't say made in 6,000 BC either. Yeah, the Bible doesn't say that either. The Bible doesn't have dates printed on it, you know? Like, the Bible can't talk about its origins. This is, this is <laughs> a really stupid, immature point that you could make about literally anything. <laughs> interpretation on them. Millions, probably hundreds of millions of petrified clams have been found in the closed position. What would that mean? They had to be buried. Um, Okay, so what Kent thinks are clams are actually brachiopods. And brachiopods have muscles that contract to keep their shells closed. But clams have an extra ligament that actually causes them to open when they die. Um, But the thing is, all that would mean is that uh, a clam, because most clams spend their lives buried in the sand, so the clam was buried in the sand and then it died while it was still buried. That's all it would mean. Like, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Buried alive. Clams open when they die. We have hundreds of them here in our museum. What does that mean when you find petrified closed clams? They were buried alive like maybe a worldwide flood would do with the tide going up and down 200 oh, well, feet instead it, of... Yeah. Like maybe like, a flood would do that. Okay, then you've sold it. <laughs> you've sold me. Yeah. Like, first of all, they, they didn't have to be dead or they didn't have to be buried alive. They could, they could have already been dead. Second of all, even if a flood caused that, you don't know that it was a global flood. 
And even if it was, you don't know that it was caused by a deity. And even if, the, if that was, you don't know it's your specific deity. So you're like three or four levels of wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. Five feet come and I'll explain it to you when you come about harmonic tides. We'll show you the demonstration. And the water has to be rushing in to fill that 200 foot bump at the speed the earth is turning. So we'd make a layer of mud 50 feet thick in 10 seconds and bury the clam beds. Yes, fossils indicate rapid burial. Let me go on here. Emma. A few I more don't minutes, even folks. know what I'm he's talking about along. anymore. Yeah, we're like, so I feel off like, topic. I feel like he was he just jumped into some other explanation about something else to do with burying clams. And I just have no, I've got no idea what he's talking about because he's jumped around so much. That I just, I'm at a loss. Yeah, I don't know my, what he's talking my, about, but it's not a response to my video. <laughs> yeah, my brain hurts at this point. What? That is a new one for me. For all the fossils, nearly all of them, formed in the big flood in the days of Noah. How many animals died today in the world? Millions. How many are going to fossilize? Probably none. It takes very special conditions for creatures to fossilize, especially when they find dinosaur skeletons fully articulated all the bones are still connected animal dies today the coyotes drag i'm pretty sure that's extremely rare you're sure that's extremely rare thank you emma i'm glad you believe that i look i just googled fully articulated fossils there's a fossil of a fish in the process of giving birth cool all the bones are still connected and how long does it take to give birth millions of years Hope not. Fully articulated. It didn't uh, get fossilized while giving birth. It died while it was giving birth and then fossilized. What does he mean it didn't take millions of years to give? Is he expecting the dead animal to still give birth? I, think I don't understand his point there. I think he's trying to say that fossilization happens so rapidly that the animal fossilized in the process of giving birth. I don't know what else you could say his point was. Oh, strange. <laughs> All the bones are still in the position. They didn't get dragged around by a coyote. Fully articulated fossils. They are extremely common. Here okay, I'm, this is going to be like the last point I comment on, so we can just finish this thing already. But um, if you mean like all fossils, uh, including sea life, then yes, there are a ton of like you could say billions or trillions of fossils on the earth technically coal is made of fossils but mm. in terms of dinosaur fossils only about eleven thousand dinosaur fossils have been unearthed and fully articulated fossils are extremely rare like most fossils are just teeth or shells by themselves not full skeletons and if you look at any paleontological paper they'll show how fragmentary the finds are um, and they'll be like, oh, we found like three toe bones and part of a tooth. But uh, it almost never happens. That's why when they find these fully articulated ones, it's big news. And that's why the, uh, the fossil finds actually get named. Uh, but it's, it, it's not as common as he's saying. That's just ridiculous. Yeah. He's basically found like a couple of examples and gone... See, it's super, super common. Yeah, I like his source here, the Bible.ca. That's that's going to be a <laughs> an unbiased <laughs> source for fossils. Yeah. Oh, totally. Here's one with the baby still in the inside. Here's one neck drawn back in the death throes, probably drowning. Another one neck bent back, but no, all the bones are still drowning? articulated. I mean, there's yeah. Remember drowning. how Kent's Kent's better at English than I am. He mm -hmm. very nearly said the baby's still in the stomach before he realized that was totally wrong. And then he <laughs> said that it was probably drowning. Ken yeah. thinks he's better at the English language than me. Just, just saying. It's his point. <laughs> drowning. We're still touching in the right <laughs> spot. This wasn't scavenged by buzzards or coyotes or ants. Fully articulated. There are many, many thousands of them that have been found, Emma. Sometimes whole bunches of them together whole herds of animals, all buried, all still fully articulated. School of fish, buried rapidly. I would say, you're wrong, Emma. 
I think all the evidence from fossils, even though they don't talk, they would be saying, we were buried quickly. I think anybody, freshman law student in a court of law could say, Your Honor, this is evidence of rapid burial. Yeah, because if you find a fossil of a fish, that definitely means the fish died in a global flood. Also, a freshman law student is the best person to understand paleontology. Yeah. Now, they haven't even graduated law school yet. They're still a freshman. <sighs> <laughs> and all the jurors would say, yeah. How, don't fish rot. Have you ever seen a fish after it's been on the beach for about three or four hours? Why does this trial about fossils have a jury? Like, I'm so confused. Between the flies and the cr critters tearing it, 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 the bones aren't all together. Emma, I'm sorry. You are simply mistaken. Okay, let's go on here. A few more seconds here and we'll quit. Right here. Thank God. Uh, does Kent know that in museums, they've put together the bones? Those were not museum put together bones, Emma. Those are found just like that. Ask Joe Taylor in Crosbyton, Texas, who's probably dug up more fossils than you and I and 50 other people together. Often, fully articulated fossils are found, Emma. You are mistaken. Does he think that they like or they all crawl out of the ground like they look when they're put together in museums? I'm very confused. I agree with that, Emma. You are very confused. Okay, that's long enough. Gee whiz, 50 minutes. I don't hardly ever go that long on uh, YouTube. That's only uh, 16 minutes. It's not 16 minutes if you count all the parts he skipped. It's probably about 10 minutes. But still, yeah. definitely long enough on, on Kent, at least. Yeah, that was uh, excruciating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like he doesn't, he just doesn't realize that the reason it takes him so long to go over so little material is because he says the same thing four times, like the exact same long winded statements he makes over and over again. That's why it takes so long. Yeah. Um, so what, what is your takeaway from this video? Like, what did we learn? Or was this just a waste of time, like you said? What did we learn? Um, well, I think we, okay, this wasn't really learning for us, but we definitely, he asked us for some specific examples on things that we managed to give. So maybe somebody else will learn. Um, I mean, I honestly, I found my eye drawn to his shirt through most of it because it's so distracting. Uh, and the like half SpongeBob face, like his whole setup is very, very distracting there. It's quite uh, busy. It's very busy. Yes, he, he wears loud shirts for sure. I don't even know. Like, my takeaway from this is that it's way more fun to watch this with a friend. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the, I like, uh, that's why I like, you know, I found it more fun watching your stream on his Darwin stuff than I would like watching his videos on my own. Because if you can join in together and have a laugh, it's like, mm -hmm. takes so much yeah. of the pressure off. So, yeah, I, I, I understand what you were saying about uh, why you, you didn't want to do any more videos by yourself, because it is weird when Kent's talking about you. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very surreal experience, especially when he gets into personal stuff. I can't even imagine how it is for like a, a woman content creator because it's so much worse with Kent, like um, because he does treat so weird. the male atheist differently. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, like Kent, the worst Kent is going to say about me is he's going to say, oh, I have seven viewers, which is like, okay, well, I know that's not true. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and I make fun of Kent a lot, you know? So I, like I said, you know, I, I think it's fair game if he wants to fire back at me, but Kent is, you know, if you're going to be a bully, then, you know, I always say, if, you know, don't dish it out if you can't take it. And Kent is a primary example of that because he gets very upset when people um, criticize him. Yet mm -hmm. he's so rude to other people. And it's like, well, Kent, you can't call people stupid and then get upset when they say your degree is BS, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And if he, he's the one making claims about how he's better at the English language and he's just a more knowledgeable man and I'm stupid and whatever. And it's like, well, then we're going to make fun of you. So <laughs> we might as well have fun doing it and uh, rip into him. Because he's, yeah, he's dishing out some weirdly inappropriate stuff. And he deserves a little slice of that back.